Hello everyone. Good afternoon. So uh, today I am going to show you some uh, tips and tricks on uh, how to use how to create a MySQL server in Google Cloud Platform, which we call GCP. So let's get started. GCP is an alternative to AWS, and uh, it's getting very much uh, uh, attention to the lot of cloud. Uh, developers and devops so nowadays people either say that you have to certify it by aws or gcp or su it's almost equivalent so if you are using gcp then one of the uh, key things or your day-to-day -day activity should be uh, creating mysql databases or maybe uh, postgresql uh, maybe sql server or oracle this kind of things so uh, here I'm going to show you how you can use Google Cloud Platform to create your MySQL database. It's a managed service. That means you don't need to manage the underlying uh, instances or hardware or anything uh, for this. It's all done by the GCP platform. You just initiate the database. You do your operations over there. You store the data over there. When you need, you can export when you want you can import so these all operations are possible so uh, let's get started we need to go to uh, create a uh, mysql database I you can just search here with uh, mysql it will give you show you options so we just wanted to go by sql mysql or sql okay it's uh, it's in GCP they call it cloud SQL instances in AWS they call it RDS relational database services so the naming may be different but the internal things it's uh, it's same it's a managed service you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure that's the key thing you just do your SQL operations it will be automatically managed by Google so let's create an instance we have uh, at this moment two flavors mysql 5.56 and 5.7 both are possible or post sql that's 9.6 or 11 both are possible so let's choose mysql and then we can uh, define the details of the uh, instance let's give a name then give a password I just automatically generate the password here. Then location region I wanted to do it uh, Asia. We have Mumbai now, so that's interesting. I just took um, Asia is two. Oh, Asia has a lot of let's try Asia is two. Okay. zone it's any zone that doesn't matter uh, my square it's 5.7 that's how you wanted to choose show configuration options okay public IP enabled yes configuration uh, machine type is dbn1 standard let's see one virtual CPU with 3.75 gigabytes let's see what are the options we have okay this is a standard one but you can do some cheaper one as well it's the cheapest f1 micro it's one virtual cpu and 640 megabytes of ram i think it's the cheapest and for testing purpose we can do that however i must say based on your own requirement you can choose any of these other versions as well that doesn't matter as our uh, testing standards we are just uh, it will be just a different uh, servers the other things will be same so let's choose the cheapest one that's possible or that's available okay then we have an ssd that's recommended 10 gigs and uh, ticks throughput iops good enable auto backup and high availability that's we have already done at database flags set maintenance schedule and labels okay that's we have all have done then let's go and create the instance 
the instance is being created that means it takes some time to create those instances and uh, Google Cloud Platform and also in uh, AWS as well because it's uh, um, managed service you need to set up the underlying infrastructure and then the setup of those additional softwares are required so it takes some time so don't be uh, impatient just uh, just wait and have a, a tea, tea or coffee or have some uh, biryani and then uh, come back again okay i am back so <coughs> i hope you've uh, you had a nice coffee or tea so my um my sql my sql server is up and running so it shows green let's go to the details Uh, it gives me an interface of uh, different things I can do in the top I can do edit import export restart stop delete even clone and then there are some other tabs here which gives me the more details I will go one by one here is a uh, quick uh, monitoring tool where I can see my CPU utilizations for last 30 days then uh, there are some details the most important thing is this public ip which i need to connect which i need for connecting to that uh, mysql server here's the details of this server but cpu one memory 614 megabytes ssd 10 gigs <coughs> the most important thing in gcp i found that it's possible to connect via the cloud shell so that's a different thing The IP is the most important part to connect to that uh, instance and then the most uh, important thing here is uh, it's it's different from AWS is that you can connect using the cloud shell. Let me show you why it's different because, uh, sorry, I just clicked a different button. So, mm, yeah, sorry. Okay. Cloud shell is, uh, it's something, uh, that's I am I'm seeing a lot of times in uh, Google Cloud Platform, which is very much uh, less common in AWS. AWS only supports Cloud Shell in uh, only I think Light Shell, but here in everything like EC2 uh, in uh, virtual machines, virtual instances, or even the SQL Server, they have a Cloud Shell. The Cloud Shell has uh, uh, most importantly it can connect to that. Uh, it can connect to that uh, instance using this cloud shell. You don't have to connect from a third-party provider tools like MySQL Workbench or maybe PHP MyAdmin. You can connect to that your uh, database server from this shell. It's uh, it's it looks very much interesting for me. I hope AWS also add this feature to their uh, core services like EC2 and RDS so that people can easily connect to that instance without having to uh, use third party providers also uh, if you see there are options to uh, import and export that's that's really different because in uh, aws you don't have the feature from the console you can you need to use some third party providers like mysql workbench to to do this so as you can see i just put the passwords and it's connected so you don't need to have any kind of third party provider so that's really a cool feature why it's cool because you don't need to whitelist any ip addresses to connect to this instance if you have to connect to your uh, local mysql workbench in that case i will, will also show you from how you can connect to mysql workbench you don't you need to whitelist your ip addresses and if you switch to different places or if you have a dynamic ip addresses or if you're traveling your ip is moving then you need to whitelist each time where your ip has been changed that's quite uh, quite cumbersome to connect to that uh, database server while you just wanted to make some queries or spew some reports so in this situation i must say that uh, google cloud platform is having some extra features which is not available in aws okay so here we can connect to that instance so let's uh, do some quick queries here
okay I have created a database so let's uh, close this so we can do its works then um, the next options here is uh, I can create a backup I can create a failover replica in a high availability and uh, there are some uh, logs which we can do here so that's these are the details tab and then uh, I'm going to go to the other tabs as well so the next step is connection uh, this connection has public IP because it's uh, I want to have public access as well because I want to connect from my MySQL workbench but if you don't have any public uh, access you can just disable it so that's fine then uh, I need to add my IP address uh, into these authorized networks as I told you I need to whitelist my IP address actually so just I click my uh, name and then I this is my uh, IP address I just copy it it's a rotating IP so um, I just need to whitelist this 32 and then I'm done and then save it's saving okay um, that's a strange anyway let's refresh for some technical reasons it it didn't saved but uh, it told me to refresh because there are some changes on that uh, sql server so let's add again click done then click the save button it is saving I uh, additional information to its authorized network it's done so my IP is whitelisted and then um, I can try to connect to that instance there are some other options available if you wanted to have uh, SSL connections uh, SSL certificate uh, enabled to connect then you can also do that and uh, that's optional okay let's go to the new tab users this is really interesting and let me tell you why in AWS, you, you can create an RDS with MySQL and uh, you can do a lot of things over there, but you cannot manage the users. You can only um, uh, reset the root password from that uh, interface as a console, but that's it, nothing else. But here, you can actually create new users. That's uh, really interesting. And uh, you can manage your users from here. You can delete, you can change passwords. So that's quite a powerful uh, console, I must say, to have a, uh, to able to uh, modify all those users and their passwords from that interface. That's really awesome. I'm not going to create any users at this moment because I already have root and so I'm going to use that but I, I suggest you should create new users to connect to your production environment and always create use a strong password then as I said here uh, the databases also can be created from this interface that's really really uh, interesting and as you can see the database that have created SNS it's now showing in this list that's super cool and you can create a new database and you can delete that's both are possible then uh, we have a uh, backups we can have automated backups enables and uh, that's that's for management purpose so you can ha turn it on I suggest replicas you can create replicas of your MySQL server you can create read replica you can create failover replica these are like advanced level features we, if you want to uh, do this you can do that and uh, that's uh, for advanced level I suppose in this tutorial I'm not going to cover all those things and operations it's it's going to tell what has been done so far in this instance and two other things I'm just going to show you and uh, one that is import so that is also very uh, 
I must say interesting because you can actually import your uh, SQL uh, files, CSV files to any of the databases, which is not possible in your AWS. I must say, I miss these features. And you can export your uh, databases to a cloud storage, like uh, uh, in in a cloud uh, location. So that's also very much interesting. You can have a SQL or a CSV port. Okay, so uh, the last point I'm going to uh, display is how I can connect that instance or the MySQL server from MySQL Workbench, which I use mostly. So I just copy this, I have copied, then um, I give them a name. Okay, then I try to uh, store the passwords. Okay, I test the connection. Okay, it has successfully connected to that instance. That's great. Close. And I'm going to go to GCP. And successfully, I have. I can see my databases. Cool. So um, that's. I think that's it to the basics so far. I'm now going to uh, delete this instance because it's uh, it's only for test purpose and I don't want to keep it running all days so let's just delete this I've requested to delete the uh, SQL server because it's uh, only for demonstration purpose and it has been finished. So what I have covered so far is how we can create a new MySQL server 5.7 in Google Cloud Platform, how we can authorize our IP address over there and how we can create new databases using different options I must say from the uh, cloud, cloud shell, from the interface console and also you can do that from the mysql workbench as as usual so uh, i hope this uh, this helps you to get started with google cloud platform and explore much over there it is a very very nice interface i must say compared to aws because it has a lot of things uh, extra added features which which is missing in aws Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you like, please subscribe to my channel. It gives me uh, encouragement to create more videos. If you guys like this, I must say you can put your comments below. And if you want to, want to see any uh, videos related to any particular topic, you can put that in a comment. I will try to cover that. So thank you for watching and have a nice day. Goodbye.